Okay, so today we're going to be changing out the V-belt that's underneath this shroud here for the DR trimmer. It's a trimmer mower. This one is the 6.75 Premier. Uh, where is that here? There it is. Alright, so we're going to go ahead and uh, start this process. The first step is to take off the four 10 millimeter bolts that are just on the outside holding this off, just holding this on actually. Uh, each bolt has a flat washer that is not attached so make sure you don't lose it because this can get encrusted with um, dirt and everything else. Um, so make sure that that is kept and saved because you'll need that to remount your shroud. Alright, so let me go ahead and do that and I'll get right back to you. Okay, so once you pop off that shroud, the next thing is going to be to take off your trim line holder and the nose here. And basically you're going to take, um, I'm not sure what size that was, I used a 13 millimeter because it's the only one I had long enough to get in there, but uh, it's about a half inch or 13 millimeter. And you'll unscrew that piece. Now a lot of the ones that you'll see online, they tell you to get a screwdriver into the nose cone here and it twists off. Well in this particular model, that's not the case. Um, this, got, this has a replacement, individual replacement pieces. So you'll have to uh, knock this bolt loose and it comes out of this shaft here, okay? Don't lose your bearings, it's very important. One of the other things is it's off, often good to uh, go ahead and open this up because as you can see that's the accumulation on uh, one of the caps here that goes over this bearing and that gets full of junk. So while you're in here you might want to take some grease and fix this all up if it's uh, pretty dirty, and mine is. So, I'm gonna go ahead and empty this out. And before we put it all back together, we'll go ahead and blow some air in there and get it all cleaned out real good. We'll grease this back up, these bearings back up, because they're pretty, pretty nasty in there. So the next step is going to be to take off these four screws here, and this should this housing here should pop off and uh, these are 3 8 I believe I said 10 millimeter earlier but it's actually 10 millimeter or 3 8 if you use a 10 millimeter because um, you don't have a 3 8 you need to make sure that you're extra careful that you don't strip or round off these uh, these bolts here that'll be not fun all right so I'm gonna go ahead and get that done and I'll show you the next step okay so we went ahead and removed the bolts this is attached to the nose cone. Uh, the tricky part is you got to pull this up and it may be tight because on the inside of this is the top pulley for your belt. So once you've gotten that disassembled you have a diagram here that shows you where the belt is supposed to feed through. All right. And I also like to take a picture of it with my cell phone just so I have a record in case I have to remove some bolts for some reason or if I find other broken parts. I know how to replace them. And if you want to go ahead and get everything cleaned up, you can do that while you're removing this belt. Use a vacuum or some compressed air, get it all cleaned up. Um, in the end, you can also spray the body with some, uh, not the inside, I wouldn't ever spray the inside, but the outside you can uh, spray with some WD-40 so it helps prevent the rusting and corrosion. But uh, while you're in here, go ahead and check to make sure everything's looking good so you don't have to take it apart again in case something else fails. So I'm going to go ahead and replace this, this belt and uh, we'll go from there. Stand by. Alright, so in order to get the belt off of these two pulleys, I did have to loosen them up. And I did have to remove this one completely to pop this uh, pulley off in order to get the belt off completely. So. Like I said, it's always good to take a picture. Now I know how this goes back on, uh, but you do too from this video. So feeding, feeding the belt back on is going to be pretty simple. Basically, you just do the reverse. The belt, which took me forever to figure out what the replacement is, is actually um, a V-belt, okay? And DR recommends a Gates, uh, I think it was a 6... 6044 or something of that nature 6444 um, and if you go 
looking for the part number if you're able to find it, which took me hours to do on DR's website. If you look for that part number, it's been superseded by another part number. And doing a search for that, it actually came up with these specs here for a 3L440G, all right, or 3L440. It's a 44 inch V belt that's a 3 8 inch wide, if I'm not mistaken. And so uh, I went ahead and bought a Dayton. This was a 8 bucks. The Gates belts and some other belts, Kevlar belts and all that stuff were upwards of $25 for a small little belt. So I found this one online, $8.27, and I got it in a day, free shipping. So um, just look around online. Make sure you're fine, you get the right belt though, because a belt that is too thick, too long, or too short is really going to mess up your... Uh, your performance and or your engine so make sure you get the right belt so I'm gonna go ahead and feed this on here and I'll let you know if I have any difficulties but it should go on in the reverse um, I can't do it one-handed just because of the way that I've got to get it on around these pulleys and such so I'll be right back okay so we got the belt on the only difficulty was <laughs> remembering how it fed on here but just remember it goes up and through so it rotates on this belt here and then goes on the back side and up. And don't forget, it's got to have enough slack in it to go through this pulley up here. Now, the most difficulty was getting this fed back on with the tension of the belt. And there's a, actually a lip on the inside of this nose cone that this orange piece slides into. So there's a little groove that has to slide into before it'll fully seat. And uh, you can tighten it down. All right, so everything looks good. And basically from here on out you're going to go ahead and put the pieces back together the way you took them off and give it a whirl see how see how it cuts uh, the reason I was having to replace my belt was I felt like there's maybe a little bit too much slack in it I was doing the adjustments up on the uh, arm over here and I just couldn't get it to be tight enough to spin when this was resting on the ground um, so I'm, I'm swapping out the belt and we'll see how that turns out all right, so I just wanted to give you a little sneak peek here at the finished product. Got our trim line put back on, got the belt put back on. I'm gonna go ahead and fire this thing up. And by the way, if you don't know, this is where you adjust your uh, tension on the pulley system through the cable line so that when you pull back on the, uh, the trimmer head throttle or uh, release bar, that's what makes it tight when you pull this back, it opens up and allows the head to spin. So let's go ahead and fire this thing up. Alright, here we go. So, I'm back up here a little bit. Just to recap, the issue I was having was that every time I pulled that bar back and laid the uh, ball on the ground to cut the grass, no matter what the thickness of the grass, it, it would stop spinning and there was just nothing there. I, like I said, I tried tensioning up the tension, okay, on the bar, no, no luck. We'll replace the belt and let's see what we got. So here we go. And uh, I hate to say it, but I believe that works probably five times better than what it was when I got it brand new. Um, the belt that they sent me installed on the trimmer mower, it doesn't have any labels on it now, um, is unbranded at least on the belt unless it got worn off but I'll tell you what this thing is spinning faster and <laughs> it seems like it's much more scary than it was before so uh, definitely an easy fix it took me about 10-15 uh, minutes with interruptions 
I had the kids running out here and trying to get on the video and everything else, so I apologize if the video was choppy. I had to kind of end them by, by segments based on when I heard the kids coming, just so I can get my thoughts together. But still, my favorite tool out here in the barn. It works great. I've got other videos showing you some destruction of uh, some some of the crazy berry bushes we have. So it'll tear through this stuff no problem, and it'll even go through you know five foot tall grass and whatnot. So definitely something to consider. This particular maintenance job took 15 minutes and cost me about nine dollars. So definitely worth it. If you're having problems, or if you have any questions about this particular machine, shoot me a message. I don't mind helping you as best as I can. Alright, well, hope you enjoyed it. On to the next.